I'm alone. I got your message. What does it mean? We need to talk. Really? Why here? It's just discreet here. Come in, we are alone. Helmers are at the dance upstairs and the maid is asleep. Are the Helmers really at a dance upstairs? Yes, why not? Sir, why not? Mills, we need to have a talk. What can we have to talk about? We have a lot to talk about. I didn't think so. No. You never properly understood me. What else was there to understand? A heartless woman jilts a man on a more lucrative opportunity. And do you up. think I am as heartless as all that? Didn't you? Yes, did you really think that? It's as you say. Why did you write to me as you did at that time? I could do nothing else. Because I have put an end to our relationship. It was all for the sake of money. Can't forget I had a helpless mother and two younger brothers in those. We couldn't wait for you. You had no future then. That may be so. But you had no right to leave me for anyone else's sake. I don't know. I think I had the right to do it. When I lost you, I lost everything. All is not lost. What do you mean it's not lost? You just replaced me at my job. Well, unintentionally. It was only today I learned it was your place I was going to take at the bank. I believe you. If you say so. And now that you know about it, are you not going to give it up to me? No. Because that would not benefit you in the least. Benefit? Benefit. I would have given it up to you. Well, I have learned to be wise. Life and hard times have taught me that. And life has taught me not to believe in fine speech. Then you have learned well, but Nils, I'm doing it for you. Now what do you mean by that? You said you lost everything. I had good reason to say so. I have lost everything too, Nils. There's no one to live for anymore. Well, it was your own fault. There was no choice then. Well, what now? Nils, how would it be if two people who have lost everything joined forces? What do you mean by that? Misery loves company. What are you saying? It's brought me to town. You mean you're thinking of me? Um, all my life, as long as I can remember, I have worked. And it's been my only pleasure in this. But now I'm alone in the world. There's no one to work for. No pleasure in working for oneself. You've got to give me something, someone to work for. I don't trust that. Just like a woman to think that she has to sacrifice herself for everyone else's sake. You mean you don't trust me? Can you really do it? You know what they think of me here. Yes, I do. And you know about my past. You think things would have been different if we had remained together? I, I'm certain of it. Well, is it too late now? Christine, why are you saying this? Your children need a mother now. I, I want to be a mother to someone. Nils, we two need each other. I, I think you're special, especially to me. Christine, thank you. Oh, um. What, what, what's going on? This is a tango. You're going to have to go after this song. Yes, yes, I'll go. But, but there's one more thing. Of course you're not aware of the steps I've taken in regard to the Helmers. Oh, I know all about that. Maybe you want to do this anyway. I know why you would do something like that, Nils. No, that's it, isn't it? You're just trying to help out your friend at any cost. So that's, that's it. I once lost track of my priorities, but if you commit to me, I won't do it a second time. I'll ask for my letter back. Yes, yes, I'll ask my No, you back. won't. Isn't that why you asked me here? Originally it was, but... Nils, in the last day I've seen why this has to go forward. Elmer has to know all about this, but... It's impossible without complete communication between Nora and Torvald. Very well. But it is your responsibility. But there is one more thing I can do in the matter, and I will do that. Um, the song just ended. The Helmers are going to be home. Yes, yes. Oh, 
I'll wait for you outside. All right. And uh, thank you for everything. Come on, Nora. Nora, no, no. Remember, that was our agreement. After the last well, we, dance, we were coming we back. We can dance one more tango, can't we? No. Good Remember? evening. Why are you here? <laughs> I wanted to see Nora in her dress. You've been here waiting for me. Yes, unfortunately, I missed you when you first left. But I figured you wouldn't mind if I waited until you got back. Yes. Take a good look at her. I think she's worth looking at. <laughs> Isn't she charming, Mrs. Lynn? Yes, yes she is. Doesn't she look gorgeous? Everyone thought so at the dance. But she's so stubborn. What are we to do with her? I had to drag her away. You regret not letting me stay longer. I only wanted one more dance. You see, Mrs. Lynn, she danced the tango and it was a tremendous success. Just as I expected, although possibly a little too over the top. But it was so good, we had to leave. <laughs> An exit is always effective, Mrs. Lynn. Don't you agree? <laughs> this room is hot. <laughs> I've had a talk with him. Laura, you need to tell your husband. You knew it, dear. Don't meet with your crops anymore, but you need to tell Warball. No, I won't tell him. Let her know. Thank you, Christine. I know what I'm to do. Well, Mrs. Lynn, have you admired her yet? Yes, I have. But now I will say good night. What? Already? May I help you with your coat? <laughs> no, thank you. Good night. Good night, Nora. Stop being so stubborn. That's right. Good night, Miss Glenn. Good night. Ah, <laughs> oh, last for alone. Aren't you tired, Torvald? No, not at all. You're not sleeping. No, on the contrary, I feel extraordinarily lively. <laughs> you, however, look both tired and sleepy. Wasn't it a good idea of mine to bring you back down here after the dance? Everything you do is right for a moment. Now my little skylark is speaking reasonably. Did you notice what a good mood Rank was in this evening? Well, I didn't speak to him very much. I didn't either. But I've never seen him in such a good mood before. You know, it's great to be all alone with you, you charming, fascinating. Oh, why shouldn't I look at all the beauty that is mine? That is my own. Say things like that to me tonight. The tango is still in your blood. It makes you more captivating than ever. <laughs> Do you know that when we're out like this, I fantasize that you are my secretly promised bride? That we are in love and no one suspects anything. Yes, I know. And when we leave, I imagine that we have left our wedding for the first time, to be alone for the first time. Nora, all this evening I've longed for nothing but you. When I watched your seductive figure dancing, my blood was on fire. And that's why I brought you down here, to be all alone with my charming, fascinating little... Let me go. What's the matter? What's the matter, Nora? I just... I'm tired, that's all. Who is it? It's me. Can I come in for a minute? Right. Nice of you to drop by. <laughs> I heard your voices and I thought I'd stop by. You have a nice place. <laughs> it looked like you're having fun upstairs. Well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't one enjoy everything? As long as one can. The wine is great. Especially the champagne. You know it's that too. I'm surprised at how much I drank. <laughs> yes, Torvald drank his share of the champagne as well. <laughs> yes, and it always puts him in such a good mood afterwards. Well, why shouldn't you enjoy a nice evening after a well-spent day? Well-spent? I'm afraid I can hardly take credit for that. Well, I can. Good for you. Dr. Rank, did you do some lab work today? 
Listen to little Nora talking about lab work. Our congratulations in order. Yes. Yes. Then you have good news for us. It's, it's the best possible news for both the doctor and the patient. It's conclusive. Conclusive. Absolutely conclusive. So wasn't I entitled to a nice evening after that? Yes, of course you were, Dr. Ray. I think so, too. So long as you don't have to pay for it in the morning. Oh, well, you can't have anything in this life without paying for it. Dr. Ray, do you like going to fancy dress balls? Yes. If there are lots of elegant costumes. What shall the two of us wear at the next? Little Featherhead, are you thinking of the next one already? The two of us? Yes. I will tell you. You will go as the beautiful fairy. Yes. But what do you propose as a good costume for that? Let your wife wear what she wears every day. That's nice. But Tom, what will you go as? Yes, sir. I made up my mind. At the next ball, I shall be invisible. That's a good one. There's a big black hat. Have you ever heard of hats that make you invisible? If you put one on, no one can see you. You're right. Well, um, I just wanted to tell you all what a wonderful evening I had. Good night. <laughs> Goodbye, old friend. Well, Dr. Rain. Thank you. Aren't you going to wish me the same? You? Well, if you want me to, sleep well. He is drunk more than he ought to. How about what are you going to do? Empty out the mailbox. There won't be room for the papers in the morning. We're not going to read all that tonight. Someone's been messing with the lock. I must have been the children. I've got it. Look at all this mail. That bit of Hmm. What's this? What is what? It's a business card of ranks. Must have left it whenever he went out. Is there anything written on it? Yeah, there's a black cross on his name. He must think he's dying or something. That's exactly what he thinks. What? Did he tell you anything about it? Yes. He said when he left the cards, that would be it. He's dying, Torvald. Poor guy. Shouldn't be by himself. He wants to be alone. That is for the best, isn't it? I find it hard to believe. He's a very good friend. We will miss him. Do you know, Nora, I've often wished that you were in some great danger so that I could come and rescue you. Read your letters, Torvald. No, not tonight. I've got some other plans. You have so much work to do. Yes. This news about rank has affected us all. Well, you go on to bed. I'll be in shortly. Good night, Torvald. Good night. Do you know what's in this letter? Yes. Is this true? Yes, it is true. I love you more than anything in the whole world. Don't give me your silly excuses. Miserable creature, what have you done? Give me the explanation, Nora. Do you understand what you've done, what this means? Tell me. I'm starting to understand. I can't believe this. For eight years, she was my pride and joy. 
A liar, a cheat, and worse, a criminal. You are just like your father. No Be quiet. You are. After all I've done, this is how you repay me? I am in the powers of an unscrupulous man. He can do whatever he wants, ask whatever he likes. I can't refuse, Nora. It's all because of you, you ungrateful woman. Maybe I should just go. You'll be better off without me. Don't give me your fine speeches, please. Your father always had plenty of those. How would I benefit if you left? You know, he can publish this. Make this known to anyone. They'll think I was part of it. Think I was behind the whole thing. Do you understand exactly what you've done to me, Nora? amazing. There's got to be some way we can figure this out. Something we can do to keep him quiet. We'll have to act like nothing has happened. You will have to stay here. We'll stay away from the children, Nora. You can't be trusted. I can't believe I'm saying this, Nora, to someone I trusted, but no. Forget about happiness. Forget about all of it. All we have left is our image now. No one That, Nora? Oh, no. That's Croft's So help me out. Something arrived from Mrs. Helmer. I'll take it. From Croft's Is there something else you haven't told me yet? I'm saved. What about me? Of course. We're, we're both saved. Both you and I. He sends you the original bond back. He says that he repents that he's had a change of heart. Who cares what he says? Is this the only copy you signed? Yeah. Then it's history. must have been tough on you. <laughs> Keeping that from me for so long? Yes. Well, don't worry your pretty little head anymore. It's all over. Nora, what's the matter? You didn't know what you were doing. If you have loved me as a wife ought to have loved her husband. Nora, I didn't marry you for your business skills. I married you because you're gorgeous. <laughs> Nora. Depend on me, Nora. I know you're helpless without me. It only makes you that much more captivating in my eyes. <laughs> what kind of husband could I be if you couldn't depend on me? Now, it's all over. I forgive you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Where are you going? To change clothes. Good idea. Good idea. No, Nora. That was a close one. Very close. But uh, I think I think with Croxet sitting the sitting the bond back, I think we'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be all right. You know, Nora. There's something about a man's heart. Something so indescribable.
indescribably sweet and satisfying for a man to be able to say that he's forgiven his wife. Which, of course, is what I have done for you. It's good all that's behind us. Well, Nora, what do you say we celebrate? Huh? Yeah. Let's see. All right, it looks like tomorrow at 12.30, about, I've got about uh, 15 minutes. We can... What's the matter, Nora? I'm not going to bed for long. Well, why not? It's so late. I'm not staying here tonight. What? Sit down. We need to talk. What's wrong, Nora? Just sit down. This might take a while. You don't understand me, Torvald. And I never understood you until tonight. What are you talking You're about? You're going to interrupt me. Let me get this out. What do you mean? Isn't there anything that seems strange to you in our being here like this? No. This is the first time that you and I, husband and wife, have had a serious conversation. What do you mean, serious? In eight years. No, longer than that. As long as I've known you, you've never talked to me about anything serious. Why would I bother you with my business matters, Nora? You I'm wouldn't be able to help. I'm not talking about business. You never have time to talk to me about the important things. You only give me shopping lists and expect me to buy the right thing and wear the right dress. Well, could you handle anything else? No, that's it, isn't it? You don't know. You don't know me at all. No one ever gave me a chance to be anything more than an object. First my father and then you. Nora, how can you say that about those who have loved you the most in this world? You never loved me. You only thought it was pleasant to be in love with me. What are you saying? True. You lived with my father. He told me what to think about everything. If I ever had an original thought, I hid it from him because he wouldn't have liked it. He called me his beautiful little doll. He treated me like I treated my doll. And when I came here to live with you... No, oh, what a thing to say about our marriage. He simply means that I was, I was passed from my dad's hands to yours, like a doll. Look at this house. Everything conveniently planned around your taste. And you never asked me. So I convinced myself that these were my tastes, too. Maybe if you had asked me, I could have told you my opinion. Or even had the chance to form one, at least. I don't even know anymore. When I look back on it, it seems like I've only existed to perform tricks for you. That's what you wanted. That's what you expected, so that's how it was. He and my father sheltered me so much that it prevented me from doing anything really important with my life. How ungrateful can you be? Have you not been happy here? No. No, I've never been happy. What do you mean, not happy? I thought I was. I don't know anymore. Purple, this isn't a home. It's a playroom. It's been your doll, just like I was my dad's doll. And I made the children my dolls, and they thought it was so wonderful living here like that. Going to parties and playing with the children. That's all our marriage has been, Torvald. Fun and games, nothing. Serious. What you say is partly true, exaggerated and strained as it might be. But from now on, things will be different. Playtime is over. Lessons shall begin. Lessons? For who, me or the children? Both, Noah. You are not the one who teach me how to be a proper wife and mother. How can you say that? You don't even know how to love me. How can you help me love the children? Nora! Didn't you just say I can't be trusted with them? When I was angry, I didn't mean that. You're right. Well, I am not ready to be a mother. I don't even know how to be a wife. And you can't teach me that. I have to learn that by myself. I just have to figure things out. What do you mean? I need to be by myself. I can't sit here anymore. I have to go to the circus game and take me into the night. You 
You've got to be kidding me. You won't take anything he bought me. He'll only take what I brought with me when we were married. You've got to be crazy. Tomorrow I will go home. Back to my old home where things were simpler. You stupid woman. I have to get a grip on things. I just have to figure things out. To desert your home, your husband, and your children? And you don't care what people will say? I can't think about that anymore, Torvald. I have to do this for me. What about your responsibilities? What responsibility? Do I need to tell you? Are they not to your husband and children? I have other responsibilities that are just as important as those. What could those be? Responsibilities to myself. Before all else, you are a wife and no! a mother. No! I don't believe that anymore. I believe that before everything else, I'm a human, just like you. I know that most people would agree with you. And they have for centuries, but I refuse to think about what people will say or what is found in history. I just, I have to try and understand things. Don't you understand your place in your own home? What about your morals, your religion? I don't even know what religion is anymore. What? I only know what the pastor told us in Sunday school. He said religion was this and that and the other. I'm away from it. I will, look, I will look into that too. I will see if what he said is true. It's at least true for me. Well, if religion can't help you, let me try. I assume you have some moral obligation. Or answer me. Am I to think you have none? Don't you have some moral conscience? Trust me, Torvald, that is not an easy question to answer. I don't know. All I know is that I have come to the realization that you and I look at things in a different light. You and I see things differently than everyone else. I thought I was doing the right thing for you and my father. You're being naive, Nora. You don't understand the way the world works. No, well, you're right. I don't. I have to figure it out. I have to figure out what the right thing is. You're crazy. You must be out of your mind. I've never thought more clearly than I do tonight. And is it with a sound mind that you willingly forsake your husband and children? And there's only one possible explanation. What is that? You do not love me anymore. No, I do not. Nora, how can you say that? I know you've always been so good to me. I don't love you. I don't know if I ever did. Are you sure about that? Yes, absolutely sure. That's why I can't stay here anymore. What have I done to lose your love? I was expecting a wonderful thing to happen, and it didn't. But I realized that you are not the man I thought you were. I don't understand. I lived with you for eight years, and I knew that wonderful things don't happen every day, so I waited. And then I just knew it was going to happen. You would confront Krogstad and tell him to publish the bond. You didn't care what people thought. Yes? What then? When I publicly exposed us to shame and disgrace? And I was so absolutely sure that you would come forward and take the whole thing upon yourself and everything would be all right. No, you never would have made such a sacrifice for me. But look at the sacrifices I have made for you. I worked for years to pay off money that was used to save your life. I would gladly work night and day for you, Nora. Bear strong desire for your sake. But no man would ruin his career for his wife. Oh, but it's okay for a woman to do it. You're talking like a child. Maybe I am, but you neither talk nor act like a man that I could spend the rest of my life with. When you found out your reputation wasn't in danger, you acted like everything was fine. It was like this whole thing had nothing to do with me. I was your little doll again. Poor God, I have been living with a stranger for eight years, and I have given him three children, and I can't stand that anymore. I see. I thought we were closer. Well, what can I do to fix it? No, I am no wife for you. I can change. Please, but only if your doll is taken away from you. I can't accept that. <laughs> That's how I know it's the right thing to do. Let's just talk about this tomorrow. No, I am not staying here another night. What are you going to do? I don't know what's going to happen. You are my wife. Where's your ring back? 
giving me mine. Thank you. The keys are on the counter. You may know how to take care of the house much better than I ever could. Tomorrow I will send Christine over to get the rest of my things, and she will have some sense. Will you ever think of me again? I will always thank you. May I contact you? Please don't do that. Well, let me know if you um, need anything. I don't want anything. Just let me know if you need anything. Will I see you again? that our relationship would be